Hello, Nelson. Okay, polyglots, polyglots, polyglots. Polyglots, from all around the whole goddamn world. Finally, finally. Finally. <laughs> finally. <laughs> technical difficulties. Yeah, por, por fin, por fin, eh. Hey, the, interview, tal? Bueno. the interview that tal, wasn't eh? meant to be. The interview eh. finally is meant to be. Oh, yes, una, una entrevista, por fin. Joder, coño. Además de verdad. Ok. Pues, so, parece que está funcionando todo bien. Ay, no sé, no sé. Ok, es un dicho, pero yo no, no estoy de acuerdo. ¿eh? Depende, depende. Ok, vamos a ver <laughs> dentro de una hora, más o menos. Ah, ok. So, Red we Bull can take energy. questions. You... <laughs> que bebes, que bebes, que bebes. <laughs> una cerveza, cervecita, una cervecita. No, no, muy temprano, muy temprano para la cervecita. Yeah, temprano, <laughs> depende, ¿no? Es eh, eh, la una, ¿eh? es la una. Es la una, para mí temprano. Sí, en España, <laughs> aquí <laughs> son las seis. ¿eh? Uh, ok, so. Everybody, we're finally uh, we got Nelson and man, we like had we could we could have shot him five or six times by the time that this happened. <laughs> and and Rob and Robert's uh, set up. He's got the best lighting of anybody. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. No, I'm out on campus. I can't hear where the internet access is good. But I, yeah. and I got my uh, my electronic mosquito swatter with me to kill the mosquitoes, yeah. just in case. <laughs> show, 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 people, show people, hey Robert, show people that because they don't know about that in uh, other countries. You know what I mean? Yeah, if I can get some mosquitoes around me, I'll see if I can zap some. But last yeah. night they were as thick as trolls on a Chris Clugston, Christoph Clugston video. But right now there's not <laughs> any of them around. So. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's my one-liner for the night. Well, we oh, that's it. it. That's all you got? Okay, yeah. that's great. Uh, all right, so this is sort of a take two on our, in our interview, but it's good because we can go through things. There were some really good things that we talked about last time. Um, we, uh, we did some of it in the Spanish last time, and we can do part of it in Spanish this time if we want to. But the first thing I think I want to start out with is something that a lot of people don't know, and that is uh, how Nelson uh, learned uh, Spanish. So, ¿cómo aprendiste español, tío? <laughs> Me explico lo. <laughs> pues, yo cuando vine a España apenas hablaba español, tenía nociones muy básicas. No, pero, sí, no, 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 pero, pero la gente, la gente, la gente no, la gente no sabe nada ¿eh? sobre tu historia. No. <risa> Cuéntanos. Además, verdad, yo creo que sí. sí. Bueno, yo vine a España y empecé hablando, 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 y bueno, decía a mitad de la cosa mal, por supuesto, tenía poco vocabulario, mi gramática era pobre. Gramática, sí. Pero Una, las ganas de aprender, la ganas de aprender y de mejorar, uh, mm. hice... Así ya hice la cosa mucho mejor, poco a poco preguntando a mi mujer esto que significa, cómo se dice, uh, mirando la película con subtítulos, escuchando la tele, esto que significa esta expresión y esto, leyendo un poquito. Y bueno, poco a poco fui ganando cada vez más conocimiento del español. Mm. Hoy en día ya tengo un nivel casi nativo, aunque aún no, no es necesariamente nativo porque siempre hay cosas que aprender. Uh, ¿Te gustaba...? ¿Te gustaba escuchar la música eh, española o no? No, la música no tanto. ¿No? ¿No? ¿Eros no. del Silencio, por ejemplo? Es, eh, famosos, ¿eh? Famosos, ¿eh? Sí, bastante, bastante. Yeah, sí, sí. Pero, oh, sí. Yo películas. Hay una diferencia en la gramática entre el, los dos idiomas, eh, portugués. Portugués, portugués. Eh, <ríe> y Europa. Sí, hay bastante. Hay bastantes cosas que son diferentes, sí. Sí, 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 sí. Y las palabras... Sí, al menos un, un buen 20% no tiene nada que ver con el portugués. Muchas mm. expresiones, muchas palabras y alguna gramática que es diferente. Vale, Así vale. Que que oh. Sí. Uh, hablamos sobre slang, dichos, 
eh, las frases sí. idiomáticas y eh, cosas como y las eso. palabrotas <risa> sí muy importante sí. por supuesto sí eso es la gente me critica porque soy un mal hablado pues ser un mal hablado es lo que hace con que yo tenga un nivel de español como tengo hoy pues si uh -huh. no supiera lo que es un gilipollas, hijo de puta y todas esas cosas. Uno Joder, no coño. Tenido. Coño, tío. <ríe> no, eh, verdad, sí, pero, eh, es una cosa muy importante para hablar correctamente en España, es porque el, el, el acento es diferente. Es una cosa que es necesario eh, saber, ¿sí? Sí, eh, por supuesto. Eh, sí, y las palabras de la calle. De la calle, sí. De la calle, de la calle. Sí. Lenguaje de la calle, por supuesto. Sí. Y sí. tú has vivido en España, en Granada, ¿verdad? Sí, sí, Andalucía, y, sí. Y, sí. y sabe cómo funciona, sabe cómo funciona el lenguaje. Yo, yo sí, yo sí, pero... Coño, hostia. Ya, yeah, hostia, es hostia. Es y frecuente. Sí, qué hostia, eh, qué hostia, que... <risa> no, no, no puedes hostia, usar Google Plus, ¿eh? <risa> Hostia, hostia, joder. Tío. Es sin duda muy importante, la, pero uh, cuando yo hablo de eso, uh, tengo muchos comentarios negativos. Así que se como que yo, depende. Todos. <risa> mini me, mini me, mini me. Eh, mini me, mini me. <risa> claro, claro. Pero, sí. bueno. pero, eh, la, pero la, la gente, la gente no, no quiere saber nada sobre las palabras de la calle, pero es una cosa normal para... para, para ¿Qué? Para tener un nivel como un nativo, ¿eh? Es, 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 es obvio, ¿eh? No se llega es, es, de es, otra es, forma. Es, ah, sí. sí. Pero, ok. okay, uh, um, okay. No, no hablo español con fluidez y los otros Hablo personas, poco de español, sí, venga. Uh, probably don't venga. either. <laughs> Maybe we should do some of it in English for the benefit of the, no, no, the, the, yeah, yeah. the majority of the viewers. <laughs> And for oh, people yeah, yeah. like me who can't keep up with you, so. Okay. Well, no, but uh, the thing uh, that we're talking about is how important it is to actually speak uh, slang and understand. Uh, yeah, the thing it's is, it's not. Language. Yeah. Yeah, but but it's not just. Uh, some people think that we're that we're talking slang. We're only talking about certain Yo things, but. Uh, yeah, but no, 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 not just yeah, that exactly. Yeah, yeah, pero, you know, by tele, you know, uh, <laughs> there's a lot Not of things that. that, yeah, they're normal. Most things, people speak, natives speak slang almost Daily. all the time. Everyday expressions. Yeah, commonly. all the time. And this is something that the, uh, the gurus who think that they are, you know, a language, they don't know this. I guess they don't have a clue about that. If you ask una cervecita, una cervecilla. Pon yeah. una jarrilla. They yeah. won't say what you're talking about. Yeah, you have to ask for a cerveza. Una caña, huh? una caña, huh? una caña. <laughs> yeah. Claro, sí. sí. Uh, and we speak, exactly. this, is, this is something that uh, is important because Nelson and I speak the same type of Spanish. So we, we can understand yeah. each We understand each other well, whereas uh, if we were to throw a Mexican or someone from Peru in here, We'd have difficulties. <laughs> They would have difficulties with us. Yeah, you know. And this is something we talked. Yeah, it's something we talked about. But there's so many countries. There's uh, 22 or 21 or 22 countries officially. There's more that speak Spanish. There's a lot of different uh, accents, a lot of different dialects, a lot of yeah, different slang. They use different slang, different. Yeah, countries. the slang is very. We talked about that. Like, uh, yeah, like. Uh, Uh, la pasta is is money la in uh, yeah. yeah la pasta is money in in Spain uh, yeah, in yeah Spain. and everybody knows la plata you know, no tengo plata la plata in South yeah, and, uh, Latin American countries yeah, yeah. Uh, no tengo la lana that's also the wool that's also for yeah. money but no uh, tengo blanca también no <laughs> yeah <No> tengo duro. <laughs> And uh, but the but the but the point is that these guys uh, on here on YouTube, in the polyglot wanna be experts, don't talk about that. They don't talk about the differences. Yep. They don't talk about how important this is because a lot of them are not living in the place Another where you country. have to. 
Yeah, and this is uh, this is a big thing about being functional. If you're really functional, you have got the ability to talk about things in uh, that are normal, yeah, that are everyday. Yeah, normal. And this is something that uh, that it's going to sound like uh, like a repeat, but that no one knows this because we didn't get it filmed last time. And that was a lot of these people, the polyglot people, misunderstood when I said if you were a native speaker, you would have learned shoelaces. And that was an example. So all these people started posting threads everywhere. Cluxton says you're not fluent if you don't know the word for shoelaces. And of course, Kaufman, who is an anti intellectual among others, I don't need to know that word. Yeah, that's right. Get busy reading some history where you can't uh, talk about, oh, I fell down, broke my arm, ah, ah, because you can't explain that. You can't open a bank account in the language. You don't know basic things because the first things you learn going over this again as a, as a child are body parts and then, of course, you learn how to dress yourself. And, then, and yeah. one, of the, one of the things you're going to know is you're going to know shoelaces. There's no native speaker unless they are retarded, which is what I said before, mentally retarded, which is the World Health Organization's term that they use, uh, you would know what shoelaces were. And, and Robert was one of the few people who understood that point. Uh, people like the Anthony Lauder, right? That's his name, right? Fluent Czech. Robert's that guy's Robert's drinking water. Yeah, it was Anthony. Anthony, he, uh, I, what, uh, what I, the, the assessment I came to on that whole dispute that was going on was it was just a matter of definition of terms. That was a video I did. Uh, yeah. For some reason, I took it down. Uh, I, I, I came to the conclusion the two of you were, were defining um, um, being functional at different levels. So even though he didn't really want to discuss, have a discussion about what it means to be fluent or what it means to be functional, yeah. that that's actually what was occurring. So, But one yeah. of the th things we talked about before, um, Nelson, was that a lot of times you, you will hear people tell an English speaker that Spanish is really easy to learn or that it's easy to oh, go yes, from Portuguese to Spanish, but you've had to work quite a bit. Uh, your native yes, Portuguese speaker, but moving to Spain and uh, learning how to speak Spanish, you've put quite a bit of work into that, haven't you? Yes, I did. Uh, despite the fact that I learned speaking and reading, I had to note down a lot of things. I still do. I still go to to word reference and check out words to make sure they the different perceptions of words. And I still come across a lot of things, a lot of new things, new words, expressions from movies. Because so, uh, I watch movies, subtitle so movies with my wife. Mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah, the, even that, despite the fact that I know quite a lot of Spanish, uh, I still have a lot of things to know. So now I've, I've been studying a little bit of um, proverbs. Los dichos, los dichos. Yeah. Proverbs, so, yeah. so if somebody really wants to learn a language well, they can, it can really be a lifelong experience. And and how many times yes. do you learn things? Do you think just when you're when you're having fun, when you're hanging out with people, or when you're watching a soccer game or something like that? It's I bet that's when you learn a lot of new things. Or when you're watching television with your wife or something. I think you mentioned something like that. Yes. That a lot of times you'll ask her what that yeah. meant or something like that. It's uh, it's an exposure. It's total exposure. See, but uh, it's uh, it's like studying. Uh, without studying, mm -hmm. it's like uh, you're in the the right environment. You don't have exactly to study from the book. You have to ask. You have to listen to, and yeah, you have to ask a lot of questions. So my it's wife is very patient. <laughs> very patient. It's like it, it's experiences. It's experiences using the language, and uh, yeah. that was something. Hey, uh, Robert, tell uh, you know, embarrass yourself. Uh, because Nelson brought this up last time, tell us about the problem you had with uh, watermelon. Oh, oh, yeah, it was the uh, pineapple. But that's one thing <laughs> oh, I was going to mention sorry. with uh, that's one thing pineapple. I was going to mention with Nelson because you know my uh, my Spanish hasn't really been improving much because you know I'm, I don't have a lot of people to practice with around here and I don't need to go do things in Spanish on a day to day yeah. basis. But I started to try to pick up a little bit of Thai. Yeah, I don't have the time, you know, linguistic student, and then uh, so that oh, keeps me pretty yeah. busy, and uh, so then on top of it, I started to try to learn a little bit of Thai, which is pretty difficult. But 
Yeah. One of the things I learned is is I just can't repeat back what necessarily what people say, especially uh, women, because you know I was out. Uh, I wanted to get a pineapple smoothie, so I was pointing at the pineapple and asking the woman, you know, what is that, you know, in Thai, and she re and she replies back, saprut uh, ka. I hope I'm saying it right. And you know she has the female particle on the end of it, and so I just proudly repeat back, "How saprut ka." You know, and she kind of looked shocked, you know, and I was like, oh, what's wrong? But she got it for me, and she, but she looked like, you know, kind of embarrassed or something, and, and, then, I, and then I was walking away with my pineapple smoothie, and I said, oh, my man, I, I realized what I did, you know. So I turned back around, and I went up and got another one. I said, I'll stop the hook, cop, you know, so I could say it correctly or with the correct uh, particle, the masculine particle on the end, so I wasn't talking like a woman. So then I walked away with my two pineapple smoothies. So they were good, but, you know, I didn't repeat that mistake again. Yeah, that's the point. That's the point. You really, that, that's a solid uh, experience learning thing. I mean, that really gelled. You know, that's emotional. It goes that goes into uh, actually talking about I recalled one uh, after, after you after you, Christoph, I will tell you one very, very funny too. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, I, I was gonna Yeah. Okay. I was gonna explain uh, that actually oh, that's no. part of the the that's part of the reticular activating mechanism. The uh, the RAM it's called. Uh, and so that those things are Evolutionarily, we remember those sorts of things. Just like if you were to fall in a river and almost drown, and uh, you fell through the ice, uh, then you'll you'll never have to make that mistake again because you remember it. So those things that have yeah. emotional impact uh, stay with exactly. you longer. Exactly. I'm gonna yeah. ask, I'm gonna tell you guys something that happened to me when I visited Oslo, like uh, like four years ago, more. Well, my Spanish was like high beginners back then. And so um, I realized that in the cemeteries, it was very, very crazy because there was this, everything had grass on the cemeteries. And I said to my wife, La gente se mea en las tumbas, which means people piss on, <laughs> on, the, on the graves. But what I wanted to say is people are uh, throwing uh, uh, seeds, uh, sembrar. Yeah. Call the word. Semillas. Las semillas. Semillas. I wanted yeah, to say, quería decir que la gente sembraba <laughs> en las tumbas. But <laughs> now you explain it to Robert Baird because I can recall that. <laughs> and instead Why? of saying, la gente sembra en las tumbas, la gente semea. Porque yeah. In Portugal, semear es sembrar. <laughs> so, yeah. Robert, I said. People, people piss on the, the graves instead of saying people throw seeds on the graves. Yeah, that's, that <laughs> probably went over really right? well, huh? That probably that, went over that, real well. That, 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 reminds me, uh, that reminds me of something that happens in Spain quite a bit. Uh, Nelson, you know this one. You've probably seen uh, some tourists or people. You know, you get these, uh, you get students coming because I, I was in Granada, which is a big university town. Uh, among, it's a big tourist and a big university town. So there would be these people, and and I worked at a club, and uh, so I'd have people coming up, and they were trying to you know speak Spanish, and and if their level wasn't really really high, I would I would just switch to English because you can hear their accent, you know. But uh, yeah. one of the thing one of the things that you constantly that people make mistake with because this is in Spain and, and this is gonna make uh, this is gonna make uh, uh, Nelson laugh you know uh, they have places you eat shawarma they shawarma they like to call them kebab in other in other countries okay. like Turkey and Germany but it's not really kebab it's shawarma you know so you have shawarma shawarma with different different uh, things yeah, with yeah. it right so, but you hear these people, they would go to shawarma places and they're trying to, they're trying to, you know, uh, they're trying to act like they're Spanish, but they're not, you know, and they would say things like this, uh, you know, son, dame una shawarma de polla. Shawarma de polla. Fucking running, yeah. Robert, yeah. Uh, maybe I haven't understood. Well, yeah, pollo yeah. is chicken and pollo is dick, so give me a shawarma <laughs> made of dick. 
<laughs> yeah, That's they, pretty bad. They uh, were <laughs> they were trying because uh, because in Spain, yeah, polla is uh, is uh, like penis. It's cock. Yeah, yeah. Man, more like. But it's, it's more slang, is it? Yeah, but they're, they're but and it's common. You, like everybody says it. But the thing everybody is, like they're trying, to, they're trying to think. So they're saying shawarma. So they have the a. So they think they have to change the pollo, you know, chicken with an a on the end, you know. And sometimes Nelson <laughs> even say dame una shawarma de pollo completa. <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. But once they make that mistake, they'll never make that mistake again. They'll never but make I, it again. <laughs> yeah. Or they're gonna get a totally different shawarma. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, shawarma places are cool. They're kind of cool to hang out late, like at you know, La Madruga, La Madruga. You know. Uh, yeah, uh, so we're talking about that, but let's talk about okay. So Nelson, man, you when did you get on? When did you get on the internet? I mean, we knew it took you two hours today, but I mean, when did you originally get on YouTube? <laughs> when did you? <laughs> when did you really? When did you originally get on YouTube and stuff? Well, uh, I was in, inspired. Got very inspired by Moses McCormick doing so many languages, studying so oh, many no. languages. No, I know you don't like you don't yeah. like both that much. I'm losing so, respect. But, uh, but go ahead with the story, though. We we got to find out what's going on with you, Nelson. So you you were you were motivated by Moses, and then uh, then what was the rest of that? Well, I started adding languages to my list, looking for um, looking for several courses and languages, and so. And look at look at Cluxton's face. <laughs> <laughs> So at this point, you probably had already you were already speaking uh, Portuguese, English, and Spanish, right? At this point, is yeah, that correct? Yeah, exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. But unlike Moses, I have a, a different approach. Um, I have a list of languages. I'm not trying to learn as much as I can mm -hmm. because uh, it's not uh, it's not possible. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. we gotta be realistic here. It's not possible to learn all the languages in the world, nor to try to learn like uh, 100 languages because uh, people who try to do it. To do, to do it, uh, they had to drop it. Look look at Arguelles, which is probably the best polyglot in the world. I don't know, but I believe it is. Uh, and even Arguelles said he's no longer taking new languages. Because yeah, I think I remember. To 50 languages, yeah. Yeah, I think the last time I remember seeing something from him, he said he was just focusing more on improving yeah, the, languages the languages he already was using. Yes. Yeah. And that makes sense. To a higher level. Yeah. I, I suffered so from that I, difficulty. I suffered what? from that difficulty for a while. I, I tried to take on too many languages, and I didn't make any progress with any of them. And then I look back, and I think if I would have just stopped uh, messing around with some of the others, I could have made more progress on on the ones I'm I'm actively working on now. So I made the same mistake too. I made the same mistake. So now I'm taking less languages at the time. Mm -hmm. There are only a few languages that I would like to take to near native fluency. Hey, uh, uh, I'm on hey, uh. We got a question here from a guy who didn't use his real name, which is, you know, usually I don't let that stuff slide. But if it's good, <laughs> let's go, huh? You know, but yeah. the, here's, here's the questions. Here's, here's the question. He, he uh, wants to know, uh, how many languages do you all speak? Uh, so, Nelson, I'll let you answer that one first. I mean, okay, I will vouch, man. Nelson is obviously fluent in English. If you don't understand him in English, then you don't understand English. He's obviously fluent in Portuguese, but the the strange yes, version. <laughs> Not the Brazil but okay. And he uh, he's 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 the completely he's completely fluent, you know, joder, la puta madre, huh? In uh, Spanish. And okay, so what other languages do you speak, Nelson? Well, I once made the video which is the worst question you can ask a polyglot. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. <laughs> people, uh, when our people are asked that question, they tend to do to give two time to two types of questions, which is uh, they say they speak all the languages that they have some notion of it, or they only say that they speak the languages that they speak really, really good, good at a high level. So when I'm asked that question, I say I speak three bad and and five bad, uh, three three good and five badly. <laughs> so Portuguese, the, my native language, Spanish, uh, native. English, advanced, 
and then a little bit of I prefer to use this term I speak a little bit of Finnish Swedish Catalan Belgian oh yeah French. but cat 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 yeah, Catalan and, and, and I yeah think it's bad man. <laughs> no 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 but cat Catalan and and, and and Gallego you understand completely and and yeah I understand quite a lot I understand yeah. quite a lot but but I'm not functional no no that's all yeah, yeah. That's speaking though, but it's like under uh, uh, listening and reading, no, no problem. So it's just you have to do it for maybe like two or three months, and you would, you know what I'm saying? If you were hanging out in Ponta Vedra, for example, you know what I mean, Glacia, you would have zero problem. I, I lived there for one month, yeah. by the way. And uh, or if you were in, you know, Barcelona, which is not Spain. Barcelona is not it's Spain. Not anyway, Spain. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what they say. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That, those of us who live in live lived or live in Spain, we we know why. But anyway, uh, so yeah, I mean, those two, those are like just you're just ready to take those languages over. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you know, they got a standing eight count from you already. You know what I mean? <laughs> I want to I want to improve Catalan. I want to take it like to round C one, and I believe yeah. uh, it's possible to take because I can practice the language from time to time. I know a few Catalan speakers or someone. Yeah, like yeah. That will help. And uh, it's okay. possible to practice from time to time. Yeah. Uh, so okay, so there. Everybody's gonna want to know uh, Robert, I guess. Uh, so we answer this guy's question. Uh, I'm, how many languages? I, I'm working. Uh, well, of course, I speak English, and I'm working on uh, Spanish and Thai, and reading Koine Greek. So. Yeah. That's what yeah, I'll right. say on that in that regards. Yeah. yeah. He spent a lot of time on Greek. He spends a lot of time on Greek, so. I would I would like to, but not yet. For instance, uh, as you as you can see, I, I didn't mention that I knew a little bit of Vietnamese. I know because I for me the basic notions that I have are not enough to say that I speak the language because I'm not. Mm. So I'm not yeah. gonna stay here saying like, oh, toy hokin vet pan toy toy noi chen toy viet because it takes it doesn't make sense. Just some phrases, just some sentences that yeah. I've learned. Oh, the Moses the move. I, yeah. <laughs> the Moses move, where you memorize a monologue and sound like a parrot and think you think you know something. Yeah. No, but Moses uh, speaks, speaks a little bit more than uh, of of uh, Vietnamese. I don't. Yeah, but I'm just saying me. that's what he does for all the languages. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, here's a guy saying he speaks Spanish from Spain. He's never been in Spain. <laughs> How do you speak? I, you know what I mean. He thinks if he throws T.O. out that he speaks, uh, he doesn't. He doesn't. You know, yeah. it's he an insult. It, yeah. He makes it a little. It's bit. an insult. It's an insult. to the Spanish people. Well, anyway, why is it you? Uh, uh, did, didn't you tell me you uh, took up Vietnamese because you were uh, you were thinking you might you might want to yes, take a trip yes, to yes. Vietnam at some point, huh? At some, it was supposed to be uh, this October, but now maybe next year or so. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we were taking vacations to other place, we'll go to a metal festival in Slovenia. Oh, that'll be good. That'll be good. Yeah. So we decided to do that instead. <laughs> yeah, that'll be trip good. To, to Slovenia, but I'm not taking Slovene. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. You should get by with your uh, international languages you already have there just fine, huh? Yeah, I get. I guess I have to improve the ones that I already started learning. Such as Finnish and Swedish, because I still suck at Finnish and Swedish. <laughs> now I'm studying Finnish with a good course, Linguaphone, and it's. I believe it's a good course. I guess you guys must like it, right? Linguaphone. Linguaphone. I, you know, me. I, I don't. I don't like the commercial you don't. stuff. No, I don't. I don't like it's not commercial. that commercial. I don't think it's not that commercial. Well, I mean, it is a commercial. It's a commercial. Uh, what do you want to call it? Product, I guess. Uh, but uh, I have I never finished a ling I've never finished a linguaphone, so I really no. can't comment on it. No, I've just talked about looking at it and stuff. Uh, the, I've done uh, most of my learning either in college, and or yeah. like yeah. here since I came to Thailand. I recently started doing. Uh, I use a couple of courses, and then I go out and try to interact with people a little bit at a time. When I first started, though, I, I with the tones, I, I thought I would be saying something, and I'd get blank stares because. They didn't understand yeah. what I was saying, and I and uh, I noticed that's one of the things. There's some big differences in this language with consonants and with the vowels. Uh, you, th I, I would think I was hearing one thing, but I was, but it's yeah, not what the hard, same thing they were they were language. saying and hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. Uh, there's 
Look, Stella, yeah, do you remember yesterday I told you I told you that uh, I was going to do like uh, an exchange? Yeah. Uh, okay. Turkish. Well, I, I started doing that yesterday. Oh yeah. So I'm, te I'm teaching this girl uh, Chansu Saraj, I believe it's his name. So I'm teaching her Spanish, colloquial Spanish, not exactly the slang stuff, but colloquial Spanish, and I'm helping I'm helping her with some grammar and stuff, and she yeah. will uh, teach me some. Some some Turkish. So I guess I will do like within thirty and forty five minutes of Turkish, uh, five days a week, and, oh, and yes, it's a good it's a good thing. Yeah. So that's a let's let's get on that. Uh, I know people are gonna say how many I know this guy how many languages do I speak? Uh, loads, loads. Uh, which ones can I function in highly? Use uh, I can function in highly in uh, Spanish, English, French, Italian. Uh, I can get by basic things, uh, and I've explained that before in Thai, uh, but uh, it's, yeah, I, I've gone as far as I want to go in Thai because of the cultural things. And there's some other languages that I used to speak that I haven't spoke again, and that's something we should also point out too. It's, uh, it's like running a marathon. You know, you might have run a marathon 10 years ago, but if you don't constantly practice, you're not able to run a marathon. Yeah, or lifting weights. You know? That's why they have to keep on studying them. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's never it's, I want to it's, learn. Never, it's never over with. You know what I mean? It's never, never over with. It's never ending. Yeah. Yeah. I want so, to see a video called uh, the Eternal Repass. I don't know exactly if it's correct. Eternal Repass. What I wanted to mean is that with that was that we have to keep on studying to maintain our level. Yeah. So we can't just study a language during three months or a year and then forget about the old deal. Unless you leave what the a, country or, you, or use the language daily. Here's something. Here's something. Uh, Robert and I have talked about this uh, many times, uh, not not on video, but we've talked about this, and this is something we're kind of wondering. Uh, we thought about, you know, where are you? But the, this polyglot, which I don't like the term because I think it's snobbish and acting like they're doing something. You know, multilingual. There's this word that already exists called multilingual. You know, I mean, yeah, some languages have, you know. Polyglotta, like uh, like in uh, Italian, it exists, yeah, but uh, but you know, uh, yeah. But uh, the point is, the these people came, you know, on on the YouTube, and they started uh, getting no notoriety, and they, and I will talk about another part that they did later that they all seem want to want to do. But where do you see yourself now? Uh, Nelson, because you've had some conflicts, or people have had conflicts with you, not as much as they've had with me, because you know everybody loves to hate me. <laughs> you know, to hate you. yeah, you know, I've got, a, I got a, I, I've got a, I got a fan club of haters. You know, you know that if they uh, would just when it comes to you, it's love or hate, no in between. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's fine with me, you know what I mean? That's fine with me. Yeah, some people some people said to Robert, You're going down, you're going down on the Clugston ship. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> then you get some then you get some trolls like that, Robert? Yeah, I, I have to start blocking a lot of people, so <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> but let's uh, let's talk about let's talk about like where you see this whole YouTube thing. Because initially well, all these people all these people started out saying, "I love languages. I'm here. I'm here because my love of languages. Oh, 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 oh! I want to kiss it. Oh, you know, I want to. You know, you know. Oh, there, quieres follar? You know what I mean? You know. I'll show you what I think about that. Just and, a second. Uh, but no, but now. Just a sec. Just a sec. Okay. <laughs> I got something here to show. Okay, he's gonna. Nelson's getting some, but Robert, Robert, and I can talk about it. But now it seems like every single one this of them. Is, this is, is your love for languages. This is their love for languages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This that's is their fucking love for languages. That's, that's where I was going. That's where it's gonna go. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> yes. Because say, Robert, doesn't it seem like every single person is trying to make money now? From this, yeah. it seemed like at first I mean, when I, I first started yeah. watching them, a lot of them were just. I got the impression they were doing it because just like a hobby is a you know is a labor of love, and now it looks like more and more of them, you know, they're trying to figure out a way that they can make a profit off of it somehow, yeah. which I don't have a problem with. But the thing is, have, most of I them have, have probably. Have uh, what? I, no. I, well, yeah. What was that? It looked like I you mean, faded out a little bit. Well, we yeah. didn't hear you, Nelson. What did you say, Nelson? 
Uh, I said that uh, I believe that uh, there's nothing wrong about making money if you're charging some decent prices. But you're like if you're like selling something like like if it's gold or platinum, uh, so that we have a problem, I believe, because not everyone is able to, let's say, uh, to pay for uh, a high amount of money. Mm. I would also like to to make some money because uh, what can I do? I know a guy who, who who hangs at the door of the church and he makes. I know no. I don't know, but my wife she treated a guy, a bum, a bum from the street, and he makes two thousand euros asking money in the church at the church door. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I believe that uh, there's no problem about making money. The problem is uh, making money out of poor people. I believe if you're charging way too much for for something, uh, if people can get the same thing uh, cheaper. I would say it's okay, but nowadays it's all about money talks, bullshit talks. It's the dollar bill, yeah, the dollar bill, right? Well, I got I got some things to say about that, but uh, you know, uh, Robert went after and pretty much shut down Bil Builder Languages, right? Is that the name of it, Builder? Yeah, it was Builder Languages, and that was pretty much obviously just a scam. You know, one of, a lot of the other ones out there, I find it too hard to get excited about. Going after them because, you know, I think they're they're not actually making a lot of exaggerated claims. But I do think, you know, some of you hear hear about people charging two hundred dollars or something for yes, you know, a coaching session. Yes, that's what I'm session. talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's yeah. too much. And I don't believe well, that uh, most people are going to really get much out of their two hundred dollar coaching session that they couldn't get out of just sitting down and practicing with one of their courses or going out and and trying to speak with some people. I I think it's just they want to. Somehow or another, just they see these people is like they're some kind of celebrity, so they want to be attached to them in some way and say, "Oh, I, st I took a lesson with that guy" or something like that. Or if they can just be a part of what he's doing for a little bit, they can catch a little bit of that excitement or something. That's what That's I think what is I'm going on there. That's what I'm against. Okay. That people charging way too much for their services. Well, uh, yeah, there's. Well, some, I was gonna I mean, talk about this. This is something that just happened, and Robert uh, clued me into this. That plus one challenge, which we're Robert and I are totally against. We're all for the minus one challenge. Yes, they've started I've, charging I've, I've people. The video, yeah. They started they charging, charging people. people. They're charging people just to sign up, Nelson. Just to sign you start up. Start charging people. That's the kind of shit I'm against, man. That's what. That's the kind of stuff I'm just. I'm against. You see. You know. If they okay. from the from out of passion and to motivate other people, let go of the extrinsical motivation. I mean, well, uh, if uh, if not, they say, okay, I'm here to make a lot of money. I'm here to get rich. At least let's be humble. I'm well, here here's, to get rich. Here's my here's here's my deal, okay? Number one, number one, these guys are all amateur dilettante scumbags who don't have education degrees. They cannot teach legally in any public school anywhere on the planet, and that's a good good uh, indication that they don't know what they're doing. And they try to make, like I said this before, and this was a really good, I thought it was a really good analogy. They're like a shoe salesman selling the size 10 shoe. So it works for if you've got a foot that's size 10 or 9.5 or 10.5, it works. But it doesn't work for everyone else, and they don't know how to make other shoes because they don't know anything about education. They don't know about curriculum. Moses and Kaufman and other people and Benny, they all try to make money off of saying education, yeah. normal Education doesn't work. Well, they, they they could never become a public school teacher. They don't know half, they don't know one third of what goes into becoming a, a teacher or the people they have to deal with. Yeah, and, and here's the thing, you know, and the thing is not only are they not real teachers, none of them, none of these people have education degrees, none of them are have certificates to teach. They're also, none of these people seem to have degrees in the actual languages. You know, and uh, for example, you know, I'm gonna whack Moses right here. This guy makes errors. He's put up, he's put up videos trying to teach Spanish grammar. He's put up things trying to teach uh, Thai stuff, and that's just some. His French is horrible beyond belief, but uh, but he doesn't know what he's talking about, and yet he's charging people. He is charging people. He is not qualified to be teaching anybody uh, these languages, you know. Uh, and the thing is, 
uh, these people are like, well, that's because, you know, the only people who don't like to, uh, degrees and diplomas are the ones who don't have them. If you're an expert, you have certificates. Guess what? That person who built the damn house, they they're an architect. They they're licensed. You know, you're going to let someone just do that? You know what I'm saying? And they people are like, "Oh, you get you get upset." You know, yeah, I get upset. You know, Kaufman running around calling himself a linguist. That's like a witch doctor <laughs> saying he's a neurosurgeon. You know? You know, and I and I challenged a Bible once again challenged every single one of these, you know, nobodies to come to uh Thailand and let's learn a village language that has we'll have three we'll do the 90 day challenge in a language that you've never seen that I've never seen that doesn't have a script and we'll see which one of us can actually uh, pull that off because they don't have the skills to do that you know uh, also th uh, they obviously can't get hired as professional linguists because they're not one and something they also can't do something you didn't know uh, Nelson is I'm busy uh, I'm doing I'm constructing a language I'm I'm creating a language. Uh, Chris, yeah. What happened with, to, uh, to the image? I can see you at the screen. The screen. Okay. Now, now we lose. I don't know. Our it's our bandwidth, I guess. But it's I, probably I, I, also because it's about trying to bounce back and forth. Oh, in okay. Three okay. Of us when we're yeah, speaking, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd be really interested to know more about how that works. But it's probably over my head anyway. So. Yeah. But so, but, but tell me about it. You make you constructing the crawl, crawling. Uh, yeah, con yeah. conlang. Yeah, I'm conlang, I'm doing. Yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing that uh, slowly with uh, it was some input. Uh, the guy that you saw, the guy that you saw in the Mongolian video, he's also a linguist, and he and I are are working on that. Manuel de uh, Yeah. Oh yeah, the Brazilian guy. He's Brazilian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, he's yeah. Belgian, right? Emmanuel de Bruyne. No, 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 no. He's he's Brazilian. Oh, oh. No, no, you're yeah. talking about we're talking about different people then. My guy, the guy in my video, the guy in my video that I interviewed, that we interviewed. Oh yeah, the, the Mongolian. Uh, the, no, it's the different. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was mistaken. But anyway, but anyway, so the. Oh thing yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I got lost there for a minute too. I started I thinking about some other guy on YouTube did those Mongolian videos. Yeah, Mateus. Mateus. Yeah, yeah Mateus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, He's sharp. So, yeah, he is. Uh, but they're gonna lose. You know, Spain's gonna beat Brazil. Uh, I'm glad they built the big stadiums so they can take that beating from Spain and <laughs> for the World Cup coming up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so what I was going to say was like one of the things that I've done is I've tried I've tried to and 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 the whole polyglot, if you want to call them that, I don't like that. But all the people, all the polyglots, have had to change have had to change their Everything they're doing since I came on, I came online and started saying, uh, "You guys don't know what you're talking about. You don't know about typology. You don't know phonology. You don't know grammar. Uh, you know, you don't know social linguistics. You don't know any of these things." And I was the one who started saying that stuff and I started putting it out there and then, and then challenging them also on the idea that you know, you're a witch doctor. Don't talk to me about what my my specialty is. You know. And every single one, there's threads about me on on uh, Kaufman's page on how to learn any language. Uh, there's a Reddit thing. There's a complete Reddit thing. There's weird stuff. I mean, people send me links to this stuff, you know, uh, yeah. about all the things. But the point is, I've changed them now. They finally have to start. And my thing about being functional has changed everybody. Nobody was talking about being functional before I before I started talking about it. Uh, you know, nobody, no one. Arguez wasn't doing it. No one was speaking about it. And now they try to get around it. Well, you know, I'm just doing it because, you know, because, yeah, it's cheaper Same than about slang. Same thing about slang. No one, no one likes to talk yeah. about that. People only like to talk about clear language, right? Um, and they, really? they end up, like, uh, formally, speaking formally, but then they can't understand a single colloquial expression. Of every no, 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 no. That's and true. They say they're functional. Right? Yeah, they're not, they're not functional at all. And the the thing is, so because these these camps these camps have formed. This I'm still on the same topic about. There's different. I think there's different because uh, we talked about this before, but they, they don't know. But for example, you get someone like David Mansuray, who knows nothing about anything, who wants to be told me he want to be a documentary guy, uh, and he's clinging to uh, Luca, but he's also yeah. He's also hooked, he's tried to hook himself up with uh, Moses. He's tried to hook himself up with Kaufman and some other people. On the, uh, and there's it's other like people I'm doing. I'm, I'm the opposite way, I guess. 
Yeah, but they're but these people because they don't have credentials. They don't have credentials. They're <laughs> Robert's like killing things. They're uh, they're uh. <laughs> My computer's uh, running out of power. I gotta go plug okay, into a power move. source, so yeah, okay. I gotta move someplace right. where I can get some some electricity. Okay. okay, but the thing is, what they're doing is because they don't really have real credentials. They're telling each other, "Wow, uh, about uh, okay." I got a question here. Just a second. Uh, I'll get to the question. But uh, the thing is, this that uh, that. They're telling, they're giving each other, like they're validating each other because they don't have real credentials. They're like going, "Oh yeah, you should hang out with Moses. Oh yeah, you should hang out with David Mansuret. Yo, you should listen to Steve Kaufman. Oh, you should, you know what I mean? They're all doing this, and and the thing is, like, uh, to me, I always just, I just say, okay, where's your credentials? They don't have it. You know what I mean? They don't have them. They don't have them. You know, Luca dropped out of that uh, interpreter's. You know, his, his, and we talked about this before. But because somebody can speak a language, uh, because someone can do something, like if they're an acrobat or if they're a fighter, it doesn't mean they can teach it. There's a big difference about that. In fact, the entire uh, science of linguistics is about taking things that are, impl that are implicit and then making them explicit. For example, I will, and, and I mean, Robert Robertson is a linguistics student right now, but he probably doesn't know this. Okay, so Robert, like, we call a Linguists call grammar things that make sense to a native speaker. Okay, would you would you say this to somebody? Uh, I aren't going with you. No, well, yeah, I I just know it doesn't work. I don't even need any, but I don't need to get a grammatical explanation. I just grown up speaking that way my whole life. You just know it doesn't work. Doesn't okay, but, right. but but listen to this. To listen to this. Okay, it, it should be I am. I am going with you, right? Okay, it's a it's a con it's a conjugation of the be verb. However, uh -oh. <laughs> this is something people won't know. But as a native, but as a native speaker, Robert, does does this make sense to you? As a question, aren't I going with you? Did you hear me? I think he lost his photo or picture there. <laughs> Robert, you there? <laughs> and we got technical difficulties. Hey, hey Robert. Hey. Robert. I guess Robert is out for now. <laughs> oh, he, uh, he, well, anyway, so okay, well he'll come back. But anyway, aren't aren't I going with you? Aren't yeah, I going? He's now he's going. Yeah, aren't I going with you? Is an acceptable. Uh, question that makes sense to a native speaker. Yeah, that's okay. Are yeah, you guys yeah. there? Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't trying to duck your question. I made the mistake of unplugging my headphones because I was okay. trying to readjust my cords, and then for some reason I couldn't get the audio back. It was okay. Okay. a little uh, a little fluke I have with this uh, with this laptop. So, but anyways, so. All right, I'm ready to listen and see what you guys are talking about again. Okay, okay. So, okay, I'll, I'll recap. This is kind of, you know, people hang with us here. So, to Robert, a native speaker of English, I aren't going with you is incorrect. But as a question, aren't I going with you? That's correct, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why is that? Why is that? Uh, and does any, I, can, I, I can explain. This is, something, this is something native speakers don't know, Nelson. They don't know why that's okay. They don't know why that's okay. And I, uh, I aren't going with you is not correct. They just say it's not correct, but they can't tell you why. Aren't I going with you? And once I explain it to you, you'll never forget, you'll never forget this either. The reason, the reason aren't I going with you as a question is because aren't, in this case, is subjunctive. It's subjunctive. The use of the subjunctive in English, most people don't. This like, you know, if I were you, a lot of people say, if I was you, incorrect. If I were you, were is a if subjunctive. I, you, I was thinking about that. Uh, if I were you, it's correct, right? Yes. Well, we don't. We don't even really. If I was you, is 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 not correct. We don't even really use subjunctive much anymore. What, Robert? It's kind of fading out, even in even in. Even in even in sociolinguistics, we talk to, 
and some other classes uh, that we've taken. We, we talk about how that the use of the subjunct is, a, is pretty much starting to fade out and people are more and more just not using it. Yeah. It's becoming standard. But the, the factor is, aren't I going with you, is a subjunctive and they don't understand that they're that's the, the subjunct because that, that gives, when you lose the subjunctive you lose you, you lose semantic import in a language. But anyway, my ability to explain that separates me from those other would-be people. You know, they don't know how to explain to people why would you use that? Why does that make sense? Just because we do. Just because we do. You know, that's not a good answer. You know, that's like, uh, you know, why why should I throw the jab? Just because we do it. Just because we do it. You know, I mean, it doesn't. Recently, you know, I've come across something. Where, let's see if I can recall. It says with the verb to do. Uh, okay. Feels good. Do it. Uh, if it's the, instead of does it, they said like, uh, doesn't it? They said do. Does it? I, I can't recall. Feels yeah. good. Do it. Feels good. Do it. It's correct, right? It, it feels, feels good. Do it. Uh, doesn't it? Sounds it strange be, to me. It should be doesn't. It should be doesn't. It, be doesn't. it doesn't. So maybe yeah. it's not the correct. Uh, maybe it's no. not the correct example. No, or that's. There, I, I think even. I think even nowadays more feels people. Good, it. I don't know how much time I want to spend on this one, but I think nowadays most people would probably say, going back to that English example, I I'm not going with you, am I? You'd probably yeah. be more likely to hear that than you would the other example, even if the other example is grammatically correct. I, you know, you probably still hear some people use it, but but uh, I think you would probably hear that example British. I just gave a lot more often or something like that. Well, it depends, though, uh, because the British would use aren't I. They would use that quite a bit. I, I, um, I listen to this, the, the, this dot it. I, it sounds yeah. awkward to me. It's strange. Yeah. It, well, it's it's a third it's a third person singular. Yeah, it should be does it. Yeah, yeah, and the people that's in in English. It's like you don't have any conjugations left hardly at all. But they say he don't do it. That's incorrect. Yeah. You know, that's like that's like what we call trailer park English. <laughs> it's got low prestige. You know, when you talk like that, it has low prestige. Yeah. But, but people uh, use it for. Did they use it daily? Uh, depends. But it's correct. Social economic class is gonna uh, yeah. do that. Uh, it has a role let, on it, of course. Yeah. Let me. Let me. I got a question here. Let me. Let me take this question, and it's from Kevin Smith. Uh, can you continue talking about the language for creating? LOL. Uh, you started and got interrupted. I guess he's talking about is he talking about the language that I'm that I'm doing that I'm creating? Uh, well, no, I'm not going to talk about it there right now because uh, this, I'm not unveiling it and uh, just you know just talking about that I, I can do it. I know what it. It's got. I will just say this. It's s. It's it's a uh, it's an S O V language, which is actually the most common typology in the world. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's got some interesting. Things that we're building into it, but uh, anyway, uh, so the where we where we started on all this was on the polyglot part. That the polyglots have become different types of people. I mean, they got these little groups that they're all in, and and you kind of got like Richard Simcock got angry with you, and then someone else got angry with you recently about slang, uh, Nelson, yeah. and uh, so so do you feel? Do you feel, do you feel like uh, you know that we're we're like, do you feel like you're Che, you know, or something, you know, Che, <laughs> that you're a that you're a rebel now, you're a you're a polyglot rebel now or not? Well, I don't know exactly how to think about that. The thing is, uh, I do not see myself as as part of the the, the Simcot, Luca Lampariello, uh, and so on group, because um. Because uh, we should support each other, I believe. And uh, what what kind of support did I ever get from from those people, right? So uh, I mm. praised them in the video. Uh, I praised Luca Lampariello. I praised Richard Timcott. Uh, I praised them in the video. Uh, I've always talked about those people. I was just thinking to talk about those people as good polyglots, and I still think. But now uh, I think they're good polyglots indeed. But they're, I'm I'm on a different kind of boat. I'm on a different kind of boat because I'm uh, I'm doing this out of love because I really love foreign languages. I really love foreign languages. Uh, I would I would also like to make some some extra money because uh, money is important. The thing is, I would never charge anyone as much as they 
I believe they charged. Mm -hmm. So, uh, doesn't Benny on his side talks about that at two hundred and forty nine dollars per hour or yeah. something like that? That's yeah. outrageous, right? Isn't, uh, isn't something we talked about recently? Didn't it come up that you you would be willing to uh, do some tutoring lessons. or working with people on Spanish and Portuguese? Wouldn't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I believe I am, I have the ability to do it because I'm a Portuguese native speaker and then um, I have a nearly native fluency in Spanish. Despite the fact that I do not have credentials, I would uh, I wouldn't be teaching people. Uh, let's see, um, I would teach the same way I learn. Mm -hmm. So I would teach them things that they cannot learn. Oh, from, there, uh, yo, con 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 uh, montón de cerveza. <laughs> Pues sí, justo. La cosa, la idea es, mi idea es enseñar a la gente a hablar español como el español se habla y no sí. apenas aprender las sí. Claro, también enseñaría a la gente uh, sus dificultades con la gramática. Pero sí. aunque yo no tenga las credenciales que tú siempre hablas, yo creo que tengo la capacidad para enseñar español. Pero no Ay, otra cosa. Español, portugués solo. No podría enseñar otra cosa. Claro, claro, bueno, claro. Español es algo. One of the things I think is, you know, I don't really have an issue with if, if people who speak a language well, if they want to do some tutoring or some coaching or work with somebody, that's perfectly fine. I think when, yeah. when some of these issues have come up, where one of the things that uh, I have noticed is that some of them are trying to claim maybe to be more of experts, like they're some yes. kind of language acquisition expert, when they're really probably just good language learners. They certainly have some tips they could probably offer people that could be useful for them. But then we get this like this situation where people charge two hundred dollars for an hour of coaching or something like that. And it's probably just really not I don't in my opinion, I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of value for those people. But if they want to spend their money that way, you know, that's all right with me. Heck, maybe I should get my website and, and start to offer some coaching and see if I could get some two hundred dollar an hour students. I mean, yeah, I'll, maybe I ought to try that out too. But I, I think a lot of them are probably better self promoters than they probably are actual uh, language teachers. I think. I don't know that. I believe it. I think of myself as a cheap whore. I wouldn't. I wouldn't charge more than fifteen twenty dollars per year. Puta! Yeah. Una puta barata, coño! Frontera, 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 frontera. Because I believe that uh, if I or someone with a good degree of fluency in a language, like a tw 15, no more than 20 euros per, per hour, I believe that's reasonable. Plus, you're, more than uh, that, in, if you're teaching if English, I, if I were a linguist, I could charge more, but I'm not a linguist. Just like, uh, just like uh, Clinton points every time, and he's <laughs> right. Uh, how could I charge? Um, you're a linguist. You could charge uh, something for language coach. You could do that. You could do that because you're a linguist. I could never charge more than than the fifty or twenty because I believe it's a reasonable. Isn't that reasonable? I'm not. I, I'm not familiar with euros, but I, it sounds reasonable to me. Yeah. Hey, uh, the way you, when you put it that way. <laughs> hang on, hang on. I got a comment. It's not a question. I got a comment here about what we're talking about. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you this, okay? So we got a comment. This sounds like a guy who's the internet stuff, because this is how internet people talk. I know a lot of people who make a lot of money on internet. Uh, it said, yeah. "Create and deliver value, and the money will follow." Focus on creating, and delivering value. Money is an effect. Uh, no, number one, you gotta have credentials before you can create value. Uh, you gotta have substance. This is one of the things that uh, advertisers forget. They think it's all about advertising. It's not. You gotta have substance. Uh, you can you can do the best sort of uh, advertising you want to, but if you don't have the skill set behind it, like you can talk about, yeah, you know, get on my airplane, but it doesn't fly. It's no good. So creating the value. And the thing is, we're not talking about a service. We're talking about education. So if you leak your stuff, it's information. It's gone, and you're you're not. It's not like uh, teaching people how to do massage or something, or or give or it's not well not teaching that's the wrong thing. It's not like giving someone a massage or going to a chiropractor because they're not teaching you how to become a chiropractor. Every time you go, it doesn't. That's a short term fix. But when you teach somebody, you're you're eliminating your job every single time you give a lesson. You're eliminating their need for you. You're making them independent. 
And so this is more valuable. It's not like, you know, here's the thing like, oh, you know, well, uh, let me see it. And then I'll tell you if I want to pay for it. Really? Let's see you go to Harvard. Tell that to Harvard or Yale. I will, hey, I want to go for four years to Harvard. Then I'll tell you if it was worth it and I'll pay you. That sort of bullshit doesn't work because this is a totally, that's a false dichotomy. That's a specious argument. So in education, it, when you're teaching somebody something, the very fact that you're teaching them, you've given them intellectual property. You've given them information. Now, and we talked about this before, but this is a good point to bring up now. Lawyers. Uh, lawyers will never give out anything. Like, uh, you know, uh, this is my, one of the things I have a problem uh, a conflict with is this cult of the amateur. You know, 17 amateurs somehow can equal an expert. They can't. They never will. And But the thing is, you never find certain... Uh, you have people on the internet who want to talk about medical stuff, but they always have a, a medical doctor that gives them information. Say, you don't see any free lawyer stuff. There's no law people giving out this. They'll put up, well, come in and for a consult and talk to me, because amateurs realize that they don't have the they don't have the the ability to actually talk about surgery or talk about. Uh, about yeah the law and the thing is if someone is teaching you it they're gonna charge you they're gonna charge you they're not gonna say okay I'll teach you and then the money will follow no that you got a set of value it's like perfume perfume is a good example of something that's very cheap to produce yet the value is in its price because if you have a low price perfume people assume it's no good uh, this is something that's been researched because I've been in marketing and advertising uh, in the actual sense for a very long period of time. But uh, anyway, the uh, uh, yeah, that's true. The okay, I got this. I got this, and this this is oh. something that uh, I got I something here that's uh, yeah. Here, when this, I got, I got a, I got a, something I want to follow up with. Uh, we we okay. I wanted to address with uh, with. Uh, Nelson there. But what would it, what was it you're going to? Well, there's a question. Here's the que well, here's a comment. Being fluent in Spanish is not the same as being a good teacher of Spanish. Teaching skills are independent of language skills. Uh, I would say that they're actually inter inter intertwined uh, because uh, your teaching has to be done in a language. <laughs> I mean, you're not almost everything you do is language dependent. So uh, you have to have a high level of the language, but teaching skills are their own set of skills, and you have to learn about is the person kinesthetic, auditory, or visual, and how you manipulate that, uh, what, uh, how to develop focus, how to keep people on task, sequentially structuring uh, learning materials, and then also which uh, having okay. something that's going to make progress for them, assessing where that their level is. See that I'm a real teacher. Okay. I've got real certifications. I know what I'm talking so I, about. I, also, I don't see exactly the point. I don't see exactly. Uh, so they're saying that. Uh, my only fluency in Spanish is not enough to teach Spanish yeah. or something like that. <laughs> no, okay. but I'm saying, so but I'm, but I'm saying, guys that they Spanish pretty well. They don't live in the country. They don't use it natively. They don't yeah. use it daily. They have no notion about the uh, informal language. So go to them and get the uh, and pay yeah. them three times or four times or ten times more. Except well, the, my point, my point is that you can know about teaching, but that that. If you know about teaching, uh, let's say you know how to teach cooking, <laughs> but of course not. <laughs> but but that doesn't mean you know how to teach a language. But you might have the teaching skills, but you also but you have to have you have to have something besides just teaching. You have to have the specific skill set. Like if you're teaching cooking, you have to know how to cook. If you're teaching language, you have to know the language. Uh, Robert, what were you going to add? What were you going to add? What were you going to add? Oh yeah, well I wanted to. One thing uh, I noticed, uh, maybe it's switching topics here a little bit, but Nelson, you you started working out recently, didn't you? A couple, maybe a few months ago, you started going to the gym to get in shape. How's that going for you? Well, I just restarted two days ago. <laughs> oh, did you? It's been like a month going. Well, but hey, yes, if, you fall oh. down, if you fall oh. down, get back up. There's nothing wrong with falling down. Just get back up, huh? Que flojo yeah. eres. Que flojo. Que flojo, que flojo eres. <laughs> Vago, que vago. <laughs> it's, at some point, it'll get to be a habit for you, and you'll just keep on doing it, just like with the languages. It, it, I bet, yeah. you know, at some point, it just gets to be a habit, and you just can't see yourself not doing it. 
you know, even if you skip a little bit, you'll come back to it again, and you'll and, yeah, and you'll like reinforce that habit language. every time. I'm going a little bit slow at languages now, but I'm getting back on the tracks again slowly, much 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 less than before. But yes, I'm I'm trying to do my best again, working mm -hmm. mostly in Finnish, Swedish, and French, and then uh, then let's see. Because you do the I never had this idea. Do you do the Professor Arguelles Arguelles deal where you listen to a some kind of audio book or some kind of a language learning Should program we? while you're doing there, working out or doing things? No, I'm, I'm not exactly familiar, familiar with shadowing. I only know uh, that uh, it's like uh, speaking uh, at the same time that, uh, than listening, something like that, right? But I'm not that sure might not be, that. Shadowing might not be the best idea to do at the gym, but maybe maybe just the, I was wondering about just the listening and stuff like that. Do you, do you pretty much, when you're out working out, do you, do you have some... Uh, some kind of like an iPod or something like that going with some of the language. Oh no uh, no no no! I, I I totally disconnect. <laughs> Do you? Okay. Just take a little hey, break. Uh, and work out, huh? Hey, uh, I got some follow up from this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do these fo the follow up from the person, uh, and this was the the same person, Carl Carlton Carlton, I guess, uh, said, for example, my wife is Colombian. I'm from the United States. My wife is clearly fluent in Spanish, but she's not an instructor. Yeah, I agree with that. You could be a native speaker and not be a teacher. Uh, and then he, then he followed up with, I could, po I could probably teach people how to speak Spanish poorly, which is the only way that I can speak it. Well, that's the point because you're, if you are a teacher, you have teaching skills, but you also got to have the specific skills. Yeah, and a native speaker is not... Is, and I've said this before. That's what I said. You know, uh, Mike Tyson, great fighter, uh, was taught by Cus Amato, who taught a lot of people. Cus knew how to teach. Mike Tyson is yet to teach someone to be uh, a great boxer. And the thing is, if you can uh, perform, and that's the same thing with what we we're talking about with languages. You can have an implicit knowledge, but making it explicit is totally different. So yes, but it is a prerequisite to know the language to teach it. Though you got to be able to speak it well. Uh, Nelson, I don't know as Nelson for a teacher. You know, I haven't had, I haven't, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I haven't tried to learn Portuguese with him or something. You know, uh, but what I got to say is he's 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 got the level in Spanish to be able, and he's got the level in Portuguese to teach people. Uh, well, these, and if you're and if you're going to teach English speakers, your your English is high enough too that you can understand when people are trying to communicate to you if they're asking you. How would you say this? Or if there was something wrong, you could communicate with them high enough in all three languages to to be at a high. You know, so you're you're a high enough level. It, it's your teaching language too that you can work with people effectively. So I think you have that, and you're going in your favor. Yeah, Spanish, Spanish, and Portuguese. I believe I could do it, but not other languages. Uh, so yeah, I, never, yeah, yeah. I never even thought about that. Uh, Maybe 20 years from now, I can teach Finnish. <laughs> how, how would I teach Finnish if I barely know Finnish, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so and I want to. I want to follow. I just want to. I just want to finish off on that comment. That's a good comment to make, and it's a good comment to go talk to the other polyglot people. I mean, I hate. I don't like using this word, but go talk to Moses about that. You know, Moses uh, doesn't know. He he doesn't speak the language well. And yet he's teaching, and he doesn't know about teaching either. He doesn't, you know. Uh, Kaufman, Kaufman doesn't know about teaching. He just tries to sell his software, which I've already made videos about. There's better software out there, and uh, I never used it. I never used it. Um, yeah. Well, no. I think it could be a useful tool, but um, you got to keep in perspective, you know, what you're going to get out of it. The only, probably the only reason I, I find it difficult to get excited about going after it, well, a couple reasons. One is because I pr think probably 90, I bet I wouldn't be surprised if 80 or 90 percent of the people who are using it aren't, aren't paying anything for it. And the ones who are paying to use it probably are paying very little. No, um, they're paying quite a bit. They're paying, it's like they're paying a thing and then if they want to, it's they're paying, a lot of people are paying 70, 80 dollars a month. Hmm. So, yeah, I, you know, yeah, for I something that. Wouldn't know how and he doesn't provide he's got no curriculum he doesn't he wants other people he's got the PayPal cyber nothingness you know he's he all he's doing is they're hosting a site and people provide content for him free then he gets people to try to do translations and stuff and they can communicate with people that go through him just like PayPal so that they they take a percentage both directions you know what I'm saying 
Uh, so it's a it's a great he's got a great illusion going because he's providing no actual tangible anything. He doesn't have a storefront, doesn't have a location, doesn't have heating and cooling. Yet they've got an office in Vancouver that his son can work full time as the as the president of the company. You know, so uh, that whole idea when he was you know I'm doing this for no he's just a big commercial for his software which is not. Yeah. Hasn't and he has once again he's got no empirical evidence that it's superior to anything, uh, and he will never have it. But the uh, but uh, I just th I will make a differentiation. That's why I've come on. That's why I came on here originally and said, look, you know, I've actually got the credentials. These other people don't. Uh, a lot of people who do have the credentials just don't waste their time. And my uh, people are like, well, why do you waste your time then? Well, because I felt the like it should be a public information service. To tell people that these people who are trying to convince you of what a linguist is and how, how language learning is and how to do it and how to be successful at it are not experts. They're self-appointed people who are trying to convince you of things. It's the snake uh, oil salesman, and it's also uh, uh, we got someone asking if they can participate. No, uh, actually, we're gonna. I'm gonna end this pretty soon because I gotta go. I gotta go to a French thing here in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's going on. We've been going on somewhere yeah, around yeah. an hour now, I haven't know. we? No, I tell you what. I mean, I don't. I mean, everybody can have a final, a final say, but we can try to uh, do another one. You know, I mean, this is not like the mm -hmm. one-time thing. So because there's a lot to say, you know. I like, you know, uh, Nelson. I'd like to get Peter Brown on here too. Yeah, sure. You know, and talk to him. We got big time differences, though, you know. Uh, and talk yeah. about actual education, because he's, uh, you know, maestro de uh, español in Texas, and so. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we can talk to him. Uh, uh, yeah. Talking about Peter Brown, I, I've never seen anyone speaking Spanish so good as he does. Not even. Really. No, no one. No one. Everyone talks about Luke. Everyone talks about Richard Simcott. No one talks about Peter Brown. Peter Brown he, deserves much more attention. When he speaks, he's been doing this for thirty fucking years. Thirty years. Native, near native Spanish, better than I do. No problem. Really, when you hear him speak, the does best. he sound like a, a, a Spanish speaker from the Spain or, or Central or? He does, yeah. He, he might okay, have. A, he might. He's a great. Okay. He's the best for Spanish. Guys, great. I got a, I got a, I got a lot of questions on here. And uh, I will just answer. I would just well, I got a comment. Uh, Kevin Smith said he tried Ling. He tried Kaufman's software, and he seems it just seems like a glorified dictionary. Yeah, good th good point. I agree with you. Uh, then I got a whole bunch of questions on here. Uh, I got some more comment about the teaching. I got people want us to comment on Duolingo and other things. But guess what? You know, we've been going for a while here, and I gotta go. So we can pick those things up in another another time. Uh, another time. What do you guys think? What do you think about that? Sure. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it was good talking to you all. It was kind of it was a fun conversation. Yeah, yeah. We can't. I'm you know, we're like, like we're like. I'm Led ready Zepp to get out of the mosquitoes too. So, and yeah, I think uh, I think uh, maybe Nelson wants to go drink, go do some drinking, maybe, huh, or something, well, or go out or something. Huh? <laughs> you know. Well, here, here's my final thing. You know, we're like Led Zeppelin. Uh, you know, you're not going to hear every song you wanted to hear at one concert. You know what I'm saying? Course, so, uh, you know, we, we, you know, we're not going to do Stairway to Heaven this time. Not doing it. So, uh, yeah. hey, it was good to finally get you uh, online, uh, Nelson. The the interview yeah. that wasn't supposed to happen, it it has finally occurred. So I'm glad we finally, finally. were able to connect with you. It was really good talking to you. Yeah. Now uh, on the way. I'm gonna be the one to hate again, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of doubt that. Como yo, como yo, como yo. Como tú, coño. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and sign out. You guys have a good night. Okay, Take talk care. to you later, Robert. Talk to you later. Okay, okay yeah, okay. Yeah. Ah, vale, yeah, tío. Yo. Yeah, pienso que es 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 todo, eh? Es todo. Pero no te crees no te crees que que Alcantre debería tener más exposición debe sí, ser conocido sí, sí, por sí. Okay. aparte es Alcantre tiene sus credenciales también sí. tenemos muchas cosas para hablar ¿eh? Uh, sí, sí pienso 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 sí pero la próxima vez ¿eh? la próxima vez sí, sí ahora ya tiempo mismo, próxima semana, ¿no? sí, ahora ah, cara, ¿no? vale vale okay 
Uh, and for uh, non-Spanish speakers, okay. So we'll talk to you next time, and we'll we'll see you. Uh, well, we'll see you. I guess what we can say, right? And so, uh, okay. Di di tu dicho famoso, eh? Pali lads, pali lads, pali lads from all around the whole goddamn world. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> okay, okay. So we'll see you next time, <laughs> everybody. Okay. Bye. See you guys then. <laughs> yeah.